All right, so today we were originally gonna have a, a, a panel of artists to come and talk about the jacket and the influence that hip hop had on them and their life growing up in the Bay Area. Um, so just to get some background on, uh, on the jacket, um, he was 37, year, 37 years old. Dominic Noonan was his original name, and he was shot down, um, shot down in Oakland um, Monday on Monday, April 14th, about a month ago, February the second. Um, at 8:14 p.m. and um, it, you know, it caused caused a lot of uh, feelings in the Bay Area because you know, Bay Area rappers stick together, and, you know, with um, with hip hop in our community, you know, that's how we stick together in the Bay Area. Um, so we just decided to create a panel. Unfortunately, the artist couldn't make it today, but we have brother Jari, and we decided to turn this panel into a conversation with everybody about hip hop and the influence that hip hop has had on you. So I'm gonna throw out some questions, and um, we just gonna, you know, free flow, get everybody's um, feelings on it. I'm gonna uh, introduce brother Jari. <laughs> He's gonna start us off with a poem. <laughs> yeah. How y'all doing today, everybody? Well, my name is Ajari. This is Chris. We're also running for student government. I'm running for Senate, and he's running for ICC chair. Uh, so yeah, like you said, this is just about to be a discussion about hip hop, but I'm just gonna kick it off right quick. Specialists are calling me the answer. I'm born from out the struggle like the Panthers, but I'm a product of hope just like the current cure for cancer. I'm Huey Newton sparking revolution in prison cells. Erica and John Nuggets trying to kill for sickle cells. Here to wish you well in a realm where only some prevail. Selling through imagination, facing brainstorms in hell. I just got free from jail. I don't bail, I think the people. Their collective voice is my cathedral. I'm Gil Scott Heron, tearing into the scripts of history because in elementary, the textbooks never mentioned me. For centuries, I lay dormant in the hearts of the oppressed. Revelation came in time for you to get it off your chest. She was sporting Jordans in a camo vest coming to meet me. I guess culture couldn't outrun time in the dashiki. See me paying dues and blues by like like Langston Hughes. Pouring a glass of pizzazz over jazzy ones and twos. Like a Mary Baraka. I walk through slums and talk to drums. Smoking ism with the rhythm. Rim shots stay in prison. I'm having visions of fruition sitting Indian style. Expose the truth to touch the youth like my man Kevin Powell. My poetry is deep like the beast that sleeps beneath the water of the father who returned home without his daughter and wife. Freedom lies naked between these pages I write. She welcomes you within the thick of the night. Don't leave her waiting. I birth my own griots, patent truth for those who see not. Some call me Ajari, but you can call me hip hop. All right, all right. Thank you, Brother Ajari. So the first question I'm going to throw out, I'm going to ask. Jar's gonna start answering it, and if you guys wanna piggyback, join in the conversation, that's how everything's gonna go. Um, the first question I have is, what effect does the death of the jacket have on black males and people in the Bay Area? Man. Okay, well I say for somebody who was so influential to, uh, to hip hop, it has a, a massive effect on, uh, on hip hop itself, on the culture, and on uh, black youth out here in Oakland in general. Because when artists, when artists die, so a lot of people, a lot of people don't really grow up with, with uh, moms or dads and stuff like that. So hip hop raises us up. Like I didn't have a dad when I was growing up, so hip hop raised me up. A lot of the things I learned was from the music that I listened to and the gems that they would drop there. So that's like taking somebody off the map. If you want to answer that question, then uh, we, could, we, could even, we could even go into like what hip hop was like after Biggie and Pac died. What hip hop was like after Easy E bless his soul, bless all their souls. Easy E died today, 20 years ago. It has a massive effect. Anybody want to pick back off the question? Being an artist today, how, how do you see murders in I mean, you're an artist, a local artist. When you, see that, when you see a, a, a artist as big as a jacket get murdered and no one knows what happened. And it makes me feel like, like we're all we're all a movement. We're all a movement as artists out in Oakland, artists anywhere. And then it's just like cutting off team members. You know what I'm saying? And this is 
this is like it's like a cog in the machine. You know what I mean? We all we all one big moving force to to better our community. You know what I'm saying? And fight against all the all the stigmatizations and stereotypes against black people and against artists in general. But like when we lose when we lose somebody, it hurts because it, it makes me feel like they're trying to take us out too. Yeah, it does. It makes me, it makes me, it makes me like, wait, fearful that, that like some of the stuff that I say will probably rub somebody the wrong way. I don't let that stop me from doing my artwork, but like as black people, you know, we should be, we should be, we should have a little bit of fear in us, you know what I'm saying? But it's about how you, how you channel that and to be productive. Because even, even though, even though they, they fighting against us, we can't stop what we're doing. And just lay over, like lay, lay over, and let them let them take what we got. It's not gonna work that way. Anybody else want to comment on a question? Well, all right, we can move on to the next question. Um, so, brother Jar just kind of touched on this. Um, with today being the day that Easy passed away, and with everything NWA the group stood for in general, um, who do you think? Um, who do you think and do you feel that there are any artists today carrying his legacy? And that's a tough question because Easy had a legacy for real. I feel like everybody, everybody who finds the courage to pick up a pen and like jot down their thoughts or to pick up a microphone is carrying on his legacy. Because in some way, he's influenced these people. Because like your favorite artist might not be Easy E, but your favorite artist was inspired by somebody who was inspired by Easy E or directly inspired by him himself. Anybody else? Yeah, what do you guys think about that? Any artists um, that you know are carrying on Easy es le legacy, um, NWA's legacy, what they stood for, what they rapped about? I don't know. Older, I'm a citizen. I've been wow. wow. all the days I decided to fall in my Is there anybody, any other artists who did? Because, uh, go ahead. Well, one other question was asking, how do you guys feel in regards to people not knowing who Jack was until he was dead? Like, his legacy seems to extend whole post mortem, and that happens for a lot of, a lot of Bay Area rappers. So, yeah. uh, All right, well, I know that Jack had personally pushed all his own music himself. And most of the stuff that he sold, like at least 60% of his sales sold outside of California, right? So that, I mean, that has a lot to do with like, what, uh, I feel like that has a lot to do with like how you, how you go about getting your music out there. Because a lot of people are constantly coming in and outside of California. And if you weren't here and you missed the boat, then you might not catch it until the artist has passed away. You know what I'm saying? There's like, cause you know, it, it tends to be like everywhere when somebody dies, but then, like, when they're alive, they, they, it's up to them to push their own stuff. So, I mean, I can relate to that. Um, like, my, my personal opinion, um, when, when, I first, when I first heard that, you know, that Jacka died, uh, I didn't really, I didn't know who it was. And then I, I listened to some songs, I was like, oh, wait, I do know who the Jacka is. And I think it's, um, the, the Jacka was more of an artist who, who pushed his art. He didn't want. He didn't really push his name. He pushed his art, and so I think that's that's what a lot of Bay, Bay, Area, Bay Area artists. Our names don't. Um, I would probably say our names mean less than what our art means to us. Um, and it's sad sometimes that we only get recognition when we're dead, but when we're alive, it's more of getting our point out and getting our art out. And as long as people are seeing and hearing our voices and um, getting what we what we express. That's, that's all, all that really matters, you know? A name, a name can come and go. Yeah, and then and as far as I'm concerned, he gonna live forever yeah. because he put his stuff on tape. So even, <clears throat> even now after his death, 
people are gonna people are gonna be able to be like, oh, who's the jack? Oh, it seems like he made a huge influence, and then go pick up his mixes and be like, yo, I can live off of this stuff. Yeah. It's feeding my soul. It's like food for the soul. That's the same with, with all these other artists that passed away. Yeah, yeah. For those who just came in, the first question that I asked was, what effect does the death of the jack have on black males and the people of the Bay Area? If anybody wanted to piggyback, yeah. I met a brother a few times, we came to a few of my studio sessions, you know what I'm saying? He was a humble, he was a respectful person, but he wasn't, uh, like he, he rapped doing the hype movement, but he wasn't too much of a hype person, individual, you feel know? yeah. And uh, yeah, I did a show with my guy, on May 24th, but it, uh, like, it's sad because like, you could be doing the righteous thing, pushing the righteous movement, you know what I'm saying? Going about everything the right way, and something like this tra tragic is that to happen, you know what I'm saying? Even when you're doing it right, like, you know what I mean? Some, some, shit, some, some stuff across you in the wrong way, you know what I mean? Definitely. Um, cool, anybody else? Well, I think that, um, you know, I think, um, you know, I'm involved in the Bay Area, West Coast music scene, like, so I can see how, you know, compared to other artists, how he, it's his own lane, and that separated him from the hype movement and all of those things, but still intertwined and interweaved with the current sound. But I think that the impact for me, I recognize that, you know, when, when people, it was people in jail that had been in jail for 20 years. There were people in prison crying about him passing because they found so much strength and the things that he talked about and represented a lifestyle that people were involved in and also added that spiritual connection to, yeah, you gotta get out there and hustle, you gotta get out there and grind, you gotta go pound the paper, you gotta do all this stuff, but know that you're connected to a higher being. You know to pray, know to be a, be a good person at heart. Yes, this world will put you in circumstances to where you have to make certain types of decisions but at the same time, have a connection with a higher power, be connected to your spirit, you know what I'm saying? So I think that the loss of him, there is not very many other musicians out here or rappers that, that are out like locally or whatever that infuse a spirituality into the hustle. And I think that uh, even at his memorial and even at his funeral, you can see the diversity of the type of people, lives that he had touched. And there was a lot of people that spoke to his, um, his influence in them to, to look into Al-Islam and, and become Muslim and just put, pick up uh, that spiritual calling from him, just merely from his music made them curious about that. So I think that that was a, a very uh, an impactful thing. And I think that um, based on him being Muslim or Islamic, had um, reflected a lot of his personality. You know, there's some people that are very, they get very cocky, local artists, you know, and he was the most, he was the one that probably could have been cocky, you know what I'm saying, as far as his prestige, he could have been an arrogant person, but he was the most humble of all of the rappers out here, like all of them, and I'm speaking of that from, I mean, I love all of them, but I'm just saying, when you see how he, in, he interacted, with regular everyday people, it was never a brushing them off. It was always, so I think that it's a loss because what, what are the street people? What are the people that are, uh, you know, real aggressive street hustler? Like, well, who do they go to to compensate for that spirituality, to have that, that, that consciousness about their actions? Because right now, everybody else is just telling you to go shoot up everybody. Just go shoot up everybody and flop, you know what I'm saying, without having any moral compass. That that's the loss um, that I've, I've recognized a lot. There's no one out here to replace that kind of energy to put out um, to, to the to what we're dealing with, especially in California. You know what I mean? Yeah, I understand that. Everybody brings something different to the table, and then once you lose it, you know, you pretty much like searching for it. Yeah. There's nothing there. And then you're waiting for somebody else to come fill that void or whatever, but it's never going to be exactly the same.
And um, I, I'm not sure if you guys were in here when I asked this question, but um, today, today's the day that Eazy-E Eazy passed away from NWA. And the question was, are there any artists that you know of today that um, you feel that may be carrying his legacy? No? No. <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, I don't know about the Bay Area, but I would say, like, yeah. from L.A., Kendrick Lamar is doing like, yeah. my excellent job. So I feel I feel the same way. There's a lot of artists, even though they may not be in the Bay Area, there's a lot of other artists who, who are just trying to get their life and their circumstances out through their poetry and their music. And that's what hip hop is. That's what that's about. That's a cultural expression. And if you live in Oakland and you're dealing with gang violence and you're dealing with your car getting broken into all the time, that's part of what you go through every day. And that's part of your culture. So if you can put that on a microphone, you know what I'm saying? And talk about that instead of talking about something else that's not getting anybody anywhere, trying to lift them, you know, because it's about uplifting people's spirits so that we can survive. Hip hop is black culture and it has affected other cultures immensely. So I think there's a lot of artists. I can start naming them off the top of my head. Like he said, Kendrick Lamar, J. Cole, there's uh there's Joey Badass, there's 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 a few. There's just a few, I feel like personally. Cause I'm more of an old school dude yeah. and I like old hip hop. A lot of the heads who were rapping back then are still pushing the same agenda now. Like Nas is still doing his thing. Jay-Z is still doing his thing. You know, uh, Common is still doing his thing sometimes. Yeah, so, so <laughs> but that's another conversation for another day. Um, well, that, that actually brings me into my next question. Um, when you think of hip hop, do you just think of the culture or do you just think of rap? Wanna... That's funny. I feel like we could ask everybody that question individually, <laughs> and everybody gonna have a different response. So. I was actually having this conversation with a friend of mine who he was like, well, "What is this hip rap?" And I was, I was trying to say that that hip hop has like a culture behind it, and when you start to think of it like anthropologically, you see all of these these different aspects of not just what people deem hip hop and uh, or not just what people deem rap. You don't just see those one just one facet. When you start thinking of it, you see all these things you see uh in seeing B boy uh, I think of like I think the way we carry ourselves can be represented in hip hop culture. I think the way we uh, speak to each other and communicate with, with each other can be seen in hip hop culture. So um, I just think of hip hop as like an overarching culture that has been established. And, and I, I would say rap is a subset of that culture. I agree completely. I agree completely with that. Hip hop is about us and what we do as opposed to people. It is literally our way to survive. Like, literally speaking, that's what culture is. And that's what hip hop is because it came out of us crying for help for survival. Trying to, trying to express the way we feel. Like you said, police brutality and all the, all the ills that were happening back in the 90s in, uh, in New York where hip hop was born. And then everybody else and the rest of the diaspora of America just like latching on and being like, all right, this is something for us that we can have to get to get our, you know what I'm saying, to get our agendas out and figure out what we're going to do about this survival thing. There's a lot going on. Hip hop has touched uh, other places, places other than just America, and people other than just black people. Anybody else want to feedback on that question? Closer, 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 clos
hip hop originated to where it's at now. Uh, each decade that it's gone through, what uh, what decade has, uh, has had an effect on hip hop, hip hop culture, um, rap, music, dance? Um, what effect has time had? Time, time is time. All right, so this is how I see it. I see like I feel like it's more of a uh, for for people who aren't like directly involved in writing music or weren't directly involved in the birth of hip hop. It's more about the effect that the media has had on hip hop, right? Because media has changed since the birth of hip hop back in the uh, back in the late eighties and stuff all the way to now to where like they're using like they uh, the people who control the media have caught on and then started to use hip hop as a way to to perpetuate like different stereotypes and lifestyles that really aren't important and it's keeping all of us like stagnant. They got glass ceilings everywhere built for us. Right? Uh, but time, time as it as it stands has had a tremendous effect on hip hop because hip hop is very different now than it used to be. Like when you think of hip hop now, you think of uh, trap music and AOAs and like the three four slaps that they put in every song that they got. But back in the day to me hip hop was Hip hop was different. It was just being born. It was just being created. So they were like putting, they were trying new things and seeing what worked. You know, people use different uh, instruments to create music then than they do now. They use drum machines and they would sample from actual records, plug the record player up into the uh, drum machine, sample machine, play the drum loop, and then, you know, play samples over it. Now it's more like you got, you was like creating sounds and stuff, like clicking a mouse and stuff. Not to say it's any less authentic, it's just the times have changed. People rapping about different stuff. The music, is, the sound is even different. So what do y'all think about that? Um, I think when Tupac and Biggie died, I think that's when real, real hip hop kind of like dissipated. Because Tupac had, um, our, you know, our end had a different style. Yeah, he talked about some bad stuff, but he still, you know, uplifted the community. And Biggie, you know, Brooklyn and all that, he had a way of talking about his struggles, talking about stuff he went through, stuff he saw, the stuff he did. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was bad, but he had a way of talking about it in the sense of you respect it. And once they died, like, no one had that level of respect. It turned, everything turned to negative. Everything turned to just disre it dis disrespectful, disrespectful women, disrespectful for, you know, the community. And I think once they died, that's when everything kind of like, Boasting about what you have, but not saying where you, where you got it from. The struggle you went through to get, and that's what they taught, and that's what's not being teach mm -hmm. to these rappers now. So that's. Uh, yeah, I mean, um, I don't know as much about Biggie, and I'm a huge Tupac fan, but I feel like a lot of the, the negative rhymes and rap over here in hip hop, I wouldn't say like it's Tupac's fault, but I feel like he played a role in it with him. Like releasing songs like Keep Your Head Up, Bring This Got a Baby in the early 90s. And after 95, when he started getting into it with like Biggie, his songs, they took on a more uh, just negative block. I mean, a lot of them, it's still a beautiful song. I still, you know, a lot of love and respect for Tupac. But I feel like towards the end of his career, like where he was taking his music played a big role in how younger people listening to him were going to take hip hop. So he's talking about, you know, hit him up, and, you know, I, I, you know, this is what y'all wanted to be, and this is what y'all sent the check and whatnot. Somebody looking up Tupac, Biggie, they're gonna take what they hear him saying. They're gonna um, use that in their song. I feel like today, there's a lot of hip hop artists like J. Cole, some of Wale songs, Kendrick Lamar, like you mentioned, a couple of like, you know, underground artists, you know, currency and whatnot. And I feel like they continue the same you know, authentic hip hop that we had, you know, before some of us were born or like late 80s, early 90s. But I feel like the hip hop industry is more so changed. There are a lot of artists who are like perpetuating or pretending to be hip hop artists. So they, you know, they got a nice rhyme or rap to it. Um, I don't want to like continue to single out, you know, Iggy Azalea because she did enough, you know, a hard time in the media. But I feel like a lot of just artists like that, where they, a lot of them actually they look like us, they look like black people, but the stories they're telling it aren't the most positive. And I feel like instead of more of that, keep your head up, bring has got a baby, we get more of that. Hit them up with more of the negative types of stuff that we're on. Um, 
and we get and we got to work for later. Uh, to time and hip hop, I feel like one thing that, that is present now that wasn't present then at hip hop is the fact that black culture is the dominant pop culture. Everyone wants to be black. Being black is, is considered to be cool. So I feel like now we have a slew of artists who embody this, um, this, this cool black persona. Um, and they can market it towards a lot of people because it's the dominant pop culture. And then you also have your artists like J. Cole, um, I would say even like Azealia Banks. You have these, these rappers who rap about things that, that we would consider like authentic rap. And I don't think that's necessarily, it's gone, but it's just like you have to deal with dual layers. You have to deal with the layer of pop culture and then you have to deal with the layer of, of like the actual hip hop culture. And I think that like when you start going through a lot of artists albums um you can see like you can see the layer that is pop culture in their albums or you can see the layer that is hip-hop culture in their albums so it's like you you're you're they drop this song and that song is a hit and everyone loves it um and when i say everyone i mean everyone who who would ascribe to to the pop culture so you would have um white girls at starbucks listening to it you would have black guys in their cars listening to it you would have mexican friends listening to it you would have asian people listening to it but then you have other songs on the album that are like, oh, okay, this speaks to a very certain subset of people. And that is, is, and I feel like that's just what you have to go looking for when you're in hip hop. So I feel like just, especially because it's music, music is really like what you want to get from it. And so if you want to get just that, that hit, you're just going to listen to that one song on the album. But some people are going to listen to this whole album and albums will change people's lives. So I just think that you have to really look for things that we would deem authentic hip hop or authentic rap. Even though I would say everything is authentic rap, but what we're actually trying to get to, you know, what we had at the beginning. So as far as time time is concerned, it's not only about time, it's about place. Because I like uh, I know that you mentioned after Tupac and Diddy died, it was a whole different ballgame. But that was only on the West Coast. As far as I'm concerned, how did Ali and Mo's death and other artists like uh, Lord Finesse are still killing it over here on the, on the East Coast. So it's, a, it's about all that too. Hip hop as a, as a collection. I feel like it did take a different direction and I feel like a lot of people tried harder to push to push that liberation that uh, that Biggie and Pac had, especially Pac. But you know, that's, that's up to, you know, who you took more from. And then also it has to do with the education. Like a lot of people uh, aren't really Edu like if you're not educated about something, if you don't understand what's going on around you, why police are brutalizing black people, then you're not going to be able to speak on that in your music at all. You're not going to be able to speak about what you do know. Uh, just to think about the you know, the education question, because like you know, towards towards the towards the end of the you know the big the writing, it was more so artists like. Thank you. 
discussion about is even relevant to what you're doing. I, I got another question. Um, what, are, what are some feelings on um, white culture in hip hop? Because there, there's two different cultures. You have regular culture of hip hop, and you have white culture. What, what are your feelings towards that? Well, shit, how do we define white culture? Um, yeah, that's, 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 because I feel like what Iggy Azalea portrays is white culture is different than what Iggy Azalea portrays his culture being white living in Detroit. So I'm just like, that's more of a clarification of what well, yeah, that's shot is. Like, how do we describe white culture? I'm probably just saying there's no white, you know, white in hip hop, you know, because although it's, although it's not seen as, you know, something that should be, down the line, it's like you have to also think about the difference that it's made in the um, I think the cool thing about hip hop is that uh, anybody can do it. You can do it and it's a part of a culture where it's not a culture, but anybody can take it and express their life or how they live or the world they come from because it's just a universal language almost now. And I think the cool part about that is, is that you can do it, but when you're imitating something that you don't necessarily know about, or you're doing something just because it's popular, that's when it becomes a problem, I think. And I don't think there's anything wrong with white rappers or anything like that, but when there are rappers like Iggy Azalea, for instance, or, you know, they have another guy named Mac Miller, I don't see any problem with his rap, but when you're just doing things to, I mean, I don't necessarily like it, <laughs> but, you know, it, you know, he's expressing where he comes from. And I don't think anything wrong with expression. It's all about expression. And, you know, it's just, it's just, to see, I, they had a, a, a meme on social media the other day, and it was like, they had a little, a little, there was a show called, I think it was the Wild Thornberry, and it, it, she was just saying gibberish. She didn't know what she was saying, because she had grew up, she had grew up listening to something like, for instance, uh, a negative uh, hip hop, or a negative, uh, a negative connotated hip hop, because and she imitates that. And I don't think there's something wrong with, with the fact that when we have come to a point where we, our people can say that people are imitating us because of the good things or the bad things. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. I think it speaks to like, like different avenues. I feel like what you, as a white person in hip hop, people will start to look at you, no, white people, other white people will start to look at you and revere you because you are braving the storm um, or paving the way for white people. And it becomes problematic when hip hop with black people is talked down upon, but hip hop with white people is elevated. When Eminem, Mac Miller, Action Bronson, Iggy Azalea, when all these people are given accolades for doing things that people that black people have done in the same genre, something's not right. Because and I don't wanna I don't wanna personalize it by saying like we created it, but we created it. And it, it's more like why why do why why does recognition come to the genre once a white person does it? What does it, like you were saying earlier, what does that say to people who are, or to kids who are growing up, or not even, not even just kids, what does that say towards young adults, middle-aged or old white and black people? That's saying that what you're doing is irrelevant until we help you, which is what, which has been a constant reinforcement throughout the history of black people, and I'm referring to black people specifically in America, the, our history is that what you do is irrelevant until we help you with it. Um, we always talk about how they freed us from slavery. We always talk about how they gave us the right to vote. Who pushed for it in the first place? Moreover, why did we have to push for it in the first place? So I, I feel like it's very unfortunate that, that and, then, and then it also has to deal with like the way the artist perceives their music and what they're doing. Because um, when we talk about privilege, a lot of white people want to, want to express the fact that they are also putting in hard work. Yes, Iggy Azalea is putting in hard work. Yes, 
Macklemore is putting in hard work. However, there are black people who have put in the exact same amount of hard work and did not win because they were black. And you won because you are white. And that needs to, they need to understand that. And I feel like Macklemore did understand that. Um, however, the other, the other ones, the other artists need to understand that they are being given certain things based on the color of their skin. And that needs to, they need to understand that and work against that. That's all. <laughs> So 
when all the positivity was being pushed, he was, he was, he, he had his hand in the pot like stirring it, you know what I'm saying? He was making it, and he understood what it was about, and he still does, and he's still doing his thing. But Iggy Azalea, she came around, and it went like, when fashion and like popular culture was, was really the thing that was getting out in hip hop, and that's what was being pushed, and it wasn't so much about like uplifting people, you know, but more so about making, making sales, and then like her lyricism is garbage to me. Like she doesn't say anything with any substance. So I don't, I just don't. She's not the problem. Simple and plain. I think, um, since everyone's on my I think it is a really prime example of why white people need to be educated like the person. Um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with like Azalea Banks and Azalea B, but um, one thing that Azalea said in regards to Katie was that, where are you when black people go through struggle? When, when there's no struggle and, and hip hop, hip hop or some black culture is everyone's doing blah, 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 you're out there on tour doing your thing. But when things like Ferguson happen, um, when things like pops and ranch shootings happen, you disappear. You are not on social media, you don't say anything, you're not there for the, the people who are the main listeners of, of you, the people where your genre comes from, you're not there to help them. So I just think that when you when you're a, as a white artist in and I'm not even put it just on hip hop, if you're a white artist in any minority driven genre, whether it be music, whether it be uh, T V, whether it be novels, books, if you are a white person, you need to understand where that comes from and you need to understand how you can help that people and not just benefit from that people. It's just like what she's doing to me is like the way slavery. You're you're just working off of the backs of the black people who came before you. Like, come on. And then she has the audacity to say things in her lyrics like calls from a runaway slave master and then doesn't understand why that's all that. That is just so ignorant. And I think that as a white person, it's it's really just even privilege to not understand how things like that can be damaged to to the, the genre that to the people that created the genre. Like how do you not understand that? So it's really like education as a white person before you can hear anything has to whatever it's more you know instead of being a black and white thing I really think it's a what are you giving back where's your heart what are you giving to the culture and the people I see Iggy Azalea I see Rick Ross they look completely different they're the exact same they're both perpetuating something that's not real that's making someone feel inferior because they can't obtain these things but they see white people and other people obtaining and having these things they're saying why am I not like that how do I have to get there Oh, guns and girls and whatever else. But what does that lead me? Jail, my family hurt, everybody in pain. What is that doing? That's making someone else happy because they don't have to go sell the drugs. They can just bring them in. And now we have a million of people. While we're doing that, we're destroying and convoluting their culture, which is a way to suppress the people and change the people, which has been done to Native Americans and a lot of people. You take their religion, you take their culture away from that. Now the younger kids don't have that identity anymore. Because all the older people that learn that stuff are in jail or killed. And one thing you do gotta understand is that it's, it's, it's not necessarily like us, like black people that are like that are destroying it from the inside out. A lot of the time, like uh, like brother said, it's the it's the industry. They infiltrate the industry, and now you gotta rap about what they say you can rap, what you can rap about in order for you to get a record deal in order for, in order for you to get signed. That's why a lot of them real good artists aren't signed, you know? Like they say on independent labels like Dell, like Mac Miller for a while, he was on uh, he was on an independent label. There's like, it doesn't make any sense. What's up, Peter? Basically, just want to add to what you said. Like, it's not, let's not act like in 2015 or in the past, how many years in the industry that has just been all hunky-dory and oh, everybody got a fair chance. Yeah, we got Rick Ross and we got Iggy, they look the same and they're making the same 
amount of money maybe, but no, that's not what it is. We're not, that's not the collective whole psychological and social, sociological things that's going on behind the scenes of that industry. Or not, that's not the collective the real world. Or we're not, and in the real world, once again, we created, it's not that it is a black and white thing, we didn't create it to be a black and white thing. The people in institution of power, that's, that's, the, um, that's um, empower everything, they created it, made it a black and white thing again, because they take our stuff, and they exploit and capitalize off of it, and then, and lock us out of it, that's where the problem comes, so, anyway, that's why it's a problem. Anything, it exactly, so, that's the problem, or what not, at the end of the day. And we're sick of it. Or it's true. It used to be about expression and being free and saying what's on your mind, but now they give you the illusion that they're doing that. But in reality, you have those higher up people that are saying, you can't say this, we got to edit this, you can't have your video like this. And all of a sudden, it becomes what they want to portray. The person is just there, you know, with the puppet strings. Yeah. All right, so let me say something before we, uh, let me say something before we have a little interview. So think about, think about uh, hip hop as a train, right? We all on this train as people. We all on this train, but it's nighttime when we sleep. We told it's going one place, but then in the night we all sleep. Somebody gets on, kicks out the, uh, kicks out the, the yeah, no, no, no. Night, Somebody kicks out the conductor, <coughs> and we wake up and we're unaware of all of this. Yeah. That's what's going on right now. It's being taken in a completely different direction, and a lot of people aren't educated enough to even know that it's going somewhere that it wasn't going in the first place. Right. Now listen. I breathe deep like an old man finding rest and last. Who spent his whole life trying to best his path. Been on the run since the setting of the seventh sun. My bare steps kept with the rhythm of the drum. The prince in the mud tell tales of what's to come. Like a warrior, I dance to the song of the sun. Smoke from the chief peace pipe. Smoke from the chief peace pipe and place my lungs. Every toe spoke, I'm choking on my tongue. Swallowing the truth in this 50 proof rum. Indigenous concoction, strong like an oxen. I can feel my eyes. Faith in the constellation. A stairway to freedom can recreate one. Probably out of love, but I aim up above like my people in the slums when it's raining down slug. Stress heavy on my drum as I march through the slums under concrete trees where my people want some. Kicking crack pipes and evil. Black rights to people. And we see a forest through the trees of my people. We sit at the table, but we really not equal. That's why the Oscar Grammy we had like seven seats. This is what I learned when I was growing up, 
and this is how I used to be, and this is how people on my like from my hood or from like I'm speaking for them as well as saying that we need to take that somewhere else. You know, like they got people like Nas, he's always been the type of person to have something real talking to say, analyzing the situations that he came from, and then flipping it to make it something better and uh, make his rhymes, uh, make his rhymes really thoughtful and uh, have people be thoughtful about the situations that they're in and what they have to deal with in this world. Young kids, he was directing this stuff to everybody, like all, all generations. There was something in his music for everybody. Uh, my, uh, my, my name is Kendrick Lamar, and I say this because I didn't really realize that it was Kendrick Lamar until uh, I, I thoroughly listened and looked up the lyrics to some of the songs in his last album. Um, and in one of his last songs, Black of the Mary, he talks about hypocrisy and living as a hypocrite. And you, you never know how, how much that hits you until you apply it to your life. So I thought he, he talked about how he he was, you know, against the inequalities of black people. But because of these inequalities, he lived his younger life to where he had hatred towards other black people. And how, um, I, I don't know how true this is, but at the end of the song, he ended, he ended with, um, with, I forget the last two lines. He was like, slave, slave something made me, made me kill a nigga blacker than me. And when I heard that, that you know, that that that, tri that tripped me out because it was like, here I am, angry at the institution for making for making me who I am. But I have to apply that to my life, and I have to think like, wait, what am I? Where is my hatred at towards my own people? You know. Um, and also, in one of, one of his songs, You, he talks about, uh, he portrays being drunk and talking to himself, talking to himself or his younger self in the mirror and talking about his suicidal thoughts and things that, you know, kept him down and like, things, things in life that messed him up. And I just think that in general, for artists to be able to do that on an album and just do it, do it with such with no fear at all in his heart, you know, that, that inspires me um, as a person to just go and attack all my, attack all my problems and, you know, let it out. And Kendrick Lamar, he just, he, he's very, he doesn't really care about what he speaks, but the fact that he doesn't care makes his, makes his song and makes his lyrics so strong. Because too many rappers nowadays care about what they say and what audience is going to attack who is going to be hurt by what they say. Kendrick Lamar doesn't do that. You know, he he attacks his problems, he attacks his pain, and he puts it in the song, you know, and that's what many artists back in the day did. They used what they were going through, you know, in their music. Without music, it was no, it was no outlet, you know? So um, Kendrick Lamar literally has to be, you know, that's a big inspiration of all that right now. I think Kendrick understands that it's bigger than him. And it's not about what, what like, what, because you know, you know what some people are going to think about your music. You be writing this stuff and be like, oh, he going to say this, you know what I'm saying? But like, who, who, why are you writing it? Like, who are you writing it for? What's the, what's the purpose behind writing this? What am I going to accomplish with these bars? Anybody else want to speak on that major artist? Well, I like Luca and the But yeah, the original nine, I like with them because they they were they you know they didn't really they had lyrics but it wasn't really misogynistic. They had the the you know they they inserted knowledge of self into they as a group they represented unity. So I, I really admired that that they moved in such a unit and just was and they all were different. So it was like none none of them image look like each other, they didn't rap like each other, everybody had their own lane, everybody worked as a unit. That is, that's one of the greatest things that I, I admired about them, and for them to always insert knowledge, positive things, even images of African Americans, you know, the way that we should look at ourselves. I think that they just created, um, they just had a whole spectrum of, of things that, that, uh, that uh, had an impact on 
the way we socially interacted, economics, all of these different various things. And again, like I said, the main thing about it was their unity. I, I admired, I admired it. I, I, I love to see that. I like to, to see how they interacted and created such a powerful, you can see the power in numbers, you know, and I just think that if we could all just take a piece of that and learn to strengthen and just create, you know, build our numbers, towards something that's a positive common goal, then I think that that would be helpful for all, everybody, any race, whatever. But I, I think to have that unity is very important and to maintain a structure that will help you, allow you to be successful. I think that's why the infiltration of hip hop is happening because people go up as an individual and they get influenced by all of these other people that really don't care too much about them. They just want to exploit them and take whatever they can take out of this artist. And when you have this unit to kind of protect and that image and move, it, it creates a little more security in preserving the message or, or whatever it is that you want to have come across without having to be too much exploited. Because it's like, well, this is how I am. Your partner's going to tell you, like, what? Well, that's not how we do it. So it kind of keeps everybody straight. I think that a lot of times now music is not like that. It was a history that it was all about clicks. But now it's not more, it's, it's more individualized. I mean, now they have the cash money thing, but they really don't really represent a unit the way that the Wu-Tang did. You know, it was like, we all work together. We co-work. You know what I'm saying? Not like we're family and we do it. So the Wu-Tang clan, all nine, the original nine, those were my. I want to add Lauren Hill because I just feel like, you know, the mission is mission to get to Lauren Hill, like, guided my, it still guides my life as of right now. Like, I could just go down the list and just be like, yes. Like, you know, every song is touching me. And, like, her lyrics is just, it's undeniable. Even her um, her MTV uh, album, The Unplugged, the Unplugged, like, she just went in. They, they, it's still not ready for that. We're still not ready for that mainstream like raw, let's talk about, you know, like intellectually, musically at the same time. So, but, yeah. Uh, you know what, um, as you mentioned, Laura, here, I, it just, it just blew out my mind that I did not mention any of the, like, great black women MTs that, like, just blow, like, Erica Badu. Shout out to Mr. Mr. Like, I, li I listen to a lot of it. She, you know, her life story and coming up in the game, she she literally just came and said, yeah, I'm a woman, but watch me look at you in your face and spit something ten times harder than you. You know? And, you know, that's that's what I, that's what I love about hip hop. And that's when it became more of a culture, because it was more so, uh, we in it together. And it's not more of a woman man can do something that a woman can't. So they were coming at each other, but in a fun, productive way, you know? And that's, that's our culture, you know? Even even if you wanted to relate this back to Africa, you know, we did things together. We competed, but it was together, and it became a unit. And that's why, you know, that brings back to the beginning of our conversation. Hip-hop is a culture. Hip-hop is a lifestyle. Hip-hop is us. And um, that's why, you know, it's just so... So 